people on that because a lot of people seem to they seem to hesitate when it comes to painting and camo and a rifle and this is me showing you that you can do it and you put a little bit of effort and take your time you can make a badass paint job on your primary rifle or for this one would it would be a camp primary but it wouldn't be my ultimate primary but this thing can serve multi rolls <laughs> What is up everybody as you can tell we are not at the range today uh, i still have vehicle issues and at our range it requires a 4x4 vehicle and currently my truck as you've seen in the last vehicle <laughs> my truck as you've seen in the last video was disabled and it's now gone it's totaled of course uh, other vehicle that I'm having to drive and, and our other two vehicles are not 4x4 and able to get to our range so a little bit of disclaimer there so either way I'm going to talk about this bad boy that I have in my hands this is actually a, a a near and dear gun to me for a certain reason sentimental reason this was actually a gun that my brother and I bought together and he owned and then my nephew had and some things come up and then now I have a chance to own it so this is a basic Savage uh, Axis 2. It doesn't have the adjustable trigger, uh, but it's a long action. And uh, it's chambered in 30-06. We'll talk about that in a minute. But no threaded barrel. It doesn't have the frills of today's hunting rifles. But for what it is, it's a perfect entry-level scout rifle. That's, that's the way I feel. And I know a scout should be a carbine, you know, maybe a 16-inch barrel. I want to say this one's around 22 inch barrel but this thing especially like if you lose the bipod and lose a few things i love having this cheek riser for the 30-06 round but it it's very lightweight as opposed to carrying a full loadout of ar-15 it does have the uh four round box magazine on there the magazines unfortunately are very expensive and getting hard to come by it has the uh if you want to come in here it has the polished savage bolt and it's very smooth Hey, guess what? I bet you didn't know I was a savage. <laughs> you liked that, didn't you? Very, very smooth. I, I love working that bolt. Yeah. <laughs> but I put on a uh, scope that I had on another AR that you'll see in a later date. And uh, I may roll in a, vi a picture here of this scope getting that AR sub MOA. Some pictures of it. But it's, a, uh, it's actually a uh, UTG AccuShot. I've had this glass for eight years now, and uh, it's a three to twelve SWAT scope. Uh, it's not very large, but the clarity on it for this level of scope is very good for the budget level and for what this rifle is. I mean, this this when we got it was like a two hundred and fifty dollar rifle uh, back, gosh, pro over ten years ago. Whenever my brother bought it brand new, and it didn't have a scope on it, so why would i put a five six seven eight hundred dollar piece of glass on a 250 dollar rifle i wouldn't right and so this glass i want to say cost me around 150 you know back when i bought it and it's been great it's held up great on a longer barrel l and i it, it got a uh, bipod added no frills Let's see if it'll do it but yeah there it goes it extends out pretty cool Sorry, I couldn't remember how they were trapped. It's just got little doodads there. But it's not going to be a rifle that you're going to run out and put hundreds of rounds through it. Not unless you know you're like Elon Musk or somebody with a substantial amount of money. Because 30 alt six right now, especially for the good stuff, runs around two bucks a round. You know, uh, and and it better ammo it gets on up there. So let's talk about the cartridge a little bit. And yeah, cheek riser carries spare ammo and all that and it's like an amazon leather sling that i thought was cool for it may change this up uh here shortly when we get into what we're going to do with this rifle this is you this is the guy she told you not to worry about so this is your normal uh 556 ar ammo 
And this is your nice 30 caliber, 30-06, World War II hero. You can, you can see there, pretty substantial. So you're not gonna be humping a lot of this around with you in the woods, but she's not sleek and pretty and tactical like an AR-15, but she's got it where it counts. When you're in any kind of vegetation, uh, things with barrier, uh, even like if you want to look at this, this brick barrier, this little guy here, this little guy is going to do some punching through way better than this. It's, it's got a lot of energy. It, like they say the 30 out six is outdated because of 308, but it still has more punch than 308. It still has a touch more range than 308. So it's still a potent round. It's not cost effective and uh it's got more recoil so you gotta be a man to handle this shit that's just the fact of the matter but either way it's pretty it's a pretty good platform to look at if you're wanting something that my philosophy of use with this would be you're gonna be doing something that you don't want to draw a lot of attention to and maybe you're in a you're, you're in a non-urban setting but maybe you're in a rural area uh, you're out of way, you know, it's something that you could easily, if you got a pickup truck, you could hang it up in the back of a pickup truck and people are not going to freak the fuck out about it. And that's one of the good things about it, especially you take off the bipod and it, it looks even less tactical and more just hunting rifle-esque. So maybe you're reconning an area, you're looking at something and you want a little bit of protection and something that you know could take down a large game, man-sized game and whatnot and not look like a threat this will be it you know you attach it to a pack or something like that or you're camping or whatever and it's lightweight you're you're gonna not raise many eyebrows having something like this on you and that's that's one of the good philosophies here and it could pull you know an spr roll it could pull a uh, dmr roll something along those lines you know if you're in a situation where you can find cover and kind of conceal yourself and do what you need to do and observe. Or if you just want to, like I said, kind of blend in and not stand out in a forested area, something like this is going to help with that. So getting into the purpose of the video today, we're, we, we talk about point of use for me, you know, camp rifle, scout rifle, something along the lines of that blending in in a wooded environment it's got the rail that'll punch through the problems that i have with this gun in this iteration as it is and i don't want to spend a whole lot more money on it it's all black in the woods anywhere you are this is going to stand out no matter what this is going to stand out people are going to look and say i know that's a rifle even from a distance you know, of a hundred yards. And I wish we had the area that we could do some film of me walking with it at a hundred yards or something like that. You're gonna know that I'm carrying a rifle. So with this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate the, the rifle assembly, the upper receiver from it, and we're going to paint the stock and see how it looks and the color. But we're gonna get into it now and uh, we're gonna go over painting the stock of this rifle. And so I believe it's just going to break down these two Allen heads right here. And it, the assembly should just slide right out. So that way I don't have to very expensively re-zero my scope. So let's get into it. So to start off, I've got about $30 in paint here that I picked up from uh, one of the big box uh, industrial stores, uh, Home Depot. You can usually get this at pretty much any store like that. I like this brand. I've painted several rifles in this brand. I like how fast it dries. And then after a few days, it cures. And it cures up really well and holds up pretty good. I mean, spray paint is not going to be, you know, like a powder coat or something that's a little bit stronger bond. But it's going to hold up pretty good. And plus, that wear and tear look is awesome. So, these are the paints that I use. This is actually a dark brown. It looks black, but it's more of a dark reddish brown. 
and this is your uh, deep forest green this is more of a military green and this is kind of a lighter od and i love using this as your base this is this makes a perfect arid light color base i always start to like start it with a light color and move to dark and then at the end i'll show you what we typically do so going over our stencils i like to use just a basic net i picked this up at home depot it does pretty good too it has that net pattern uh, you can go to your hobby stores like here's a some cheetah leopard print whatever here zebra stripes uh, i tried this and for this gun it it's not too great but it's like a fish scale mermaid type deal from hobby lobby so you can go to your hobby stores and pick these up and this was like a dollar 49 so you can pick up stencils like this so if you want to get creative creative in your spray painting you can pick up different stencils or you can kind of just use what you got laying around the shop here all right so we separated the uh receiver assembly and the barrel from our stock so we're going to hit it with a uh, base coat and we're base coating it with this rust-oleum camo paint from home depot uh this, we're going to lay a coat of base down here on it I have to go crazy. Not gonna be perfect on the first coat. Probably not gonna be full coverage. So here we have our first coat. We're gonna put another coat on here before we actually start camoing it. But yeah, this uh, this does a good job just on the first coat. You can see just a little bleed through and this was completely black, of course. So here we are, we used a net and made some of this pattern here. So we used this net, just any kind of netting material. And then we went back and just did some broad strokes over it just to kind of give it that stropping along with that. So that way it's not any one uniform color. So something you may notice when painting, like I like to hit it with some hard lines here, just to kind of give it that sweeping motion, maybe like a tiger stripe or whatever. It's good for breaking up, kind of do it at random. Don't, don't keep any certain pattern to it or anything. But what I like to do here after I'm done, see how these hard lines are? I don't particularly care for them and they may stand out depending on what area you're in. So what I will do, and I'll show you this side for reference, is I'll go back over it and kind of mist it with a base, like put your net back on and mist it with the base color. And that's going to subdue. It's gonna give it more of that ATAX subdued look. So yeah, here we are. We've got our net back over the gun, so we're just gonna lightly mist it. That'll give us our subdued look. Kinda wanna go against the grain here. Don't wanna get carried away, just a few spots here and there. It's a little windy today. subdued the color pretty good we've kind of got our pattern on here so something i'll do too if, if i ever feel like there's too much pattern i'll just kind of mist it so just a little mist kind of calms the pattern down just a little bit and you can kind of do this and repeat to your liking you know you're not going to go too crazy with layers or anything just two good base coats and then back and forth so it's like i feel like i may want to add a little more brown here subdue it on the front of the gun so that's what i'm going to do when you do this you definitely don't want to be like right up on the gun you definitely want to be kind of off in a way if you're right up on it it's going to bleed through you're not going to get much pattern 
So went back, hit it with a little bit more of the OD just to calm it down. And I am pretty much where I like it now. Might be a little bit more pattern back here than I want, but it actually looks okay and I'm good with it. And it's gonna help break up the profile. So after marking, mocking, <laughs> so after mocking up the gun, and showing the, the somewhat the final product to my buddies, they said I should paint this because of the black outline. And I agree, I, I have a hard time painting barrels of guns, and especially whenever they're decently finished. But it, at the end of it all, I look at it, I'm like, like I said, it's a $250 gun and the scope, I think I paid 130, 120 while it's a great scope, the black is gonna stand out. And so I've just decided that I'm going to paint it the base coat and see how I like it. And then I may end up camo in the scope and may do a slap pattern on the barrel on there. So let's see how it turns out. What a transition, huh? That is pretty freaking awesome. So I wasn't going to paint the scope or the barrel and the receiver assembly, but after I did it and after talking to some friends, and whatnot and for better purposes of it being camo and concealable in the woods I went ahead and did it and i am not mad at all in fact i really like it uh the biggest thing is i want to take away because of course before this we went through painting a gun is just to take your time <laughs> like bob ross says there's happy little mistakes and uh when I first did it, there was a lot of hard lines, and it's easy to fix those. As I talked about in the video, you just hit it back with your base. Like, you want to start with a light color base, and then whenever you got those hard lines that you don't like, like I had right here, you just kind of breeze over them and blend over them, and it lightens the gun. It gives it that very Atax look and almost like that Cryptek Highlander scaled look using the net, the, uh, net that I used, but... That is freaking awesome, and we'll get we'll get a close up shot here of it. So, for what I have in this gun, which is probably around 350-ish with the glass and the bipod sling, uh, did change up the sling. I went with something a little bit more adjustable uh, because I do have a video plan coming for you, an action video, so you can kind of see what a loadout with this would include. I can't do it right now, but I thought, hey, what better time to paint this gun and make it ready and actually do a video on that because a lot of people seem to they seem to hesitate when it comes to painting and camo and a rifle and this is me showing you that you can do it and you put a little bit of effort and take your time you can make a badass paint job on your primary rifle or for this one wouldn't it would be a camp primary but it wouldn't be my ultimate primary but this thing can serve multi-roles those the 30 out 6 is great too ammo availability is a little better than the others but either way this turned out great and i i am for one excited to take this out and with the new uh it's a little little different kit setup that we're going to do you're going to see it in the future not too long and uh yeah I, I really like it i really like the way it turned out i even painted the inside of the scope covers just to help out with the darkness. I'll probably veil 
the front if I'm ever running it with some mesh. But yeah, get out there and get yourself a camp scout style rifle. Pretty cheap. You don't have to pay five to eight to a thousand dollars for a true scout rifle. You can build your own. You can build your own and in some ways make it better than that one off the shelf. So here we are, Savage Axis, 30-06, long action, uh, four round magazine, so four plus one, so you can roll out with five rounds of 30-06 in whatever flavor loading that you want. And that's pretty potent. Yeah, you're not gonna go fight wars without a support group, you know, of maybe riflemen or whatever, but this is a pretty powerful round and it'll defeat a lot of uh, body armor in Minecraft. But either way, it's a great piece of kit to have. So go out and grab yourself one. This is XXL Dude reminding you that resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. Now you can take care. Thank <laughs> you.